Welcome to Tribes this morning. If you're new around here, my name is Gavin. I serve as the pastor here at Tribes Church. We're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, right out of the gate, we, we wanted to do a quick song, kind of a call to worship, and we're actually going to open today with a message. So uh, I know it feels a little different and backwards from what we normally do, but I promise it'll have a purpose here in just a minute. But before we dive into that, I want to set up a couple of quick uh, things that are really exciting uh, that God's just been doing in and through our church um, if you weren't at our, at our land vision visit two weeks ago, uh, first of all, if you weren't there, we have some dirt that we gave out to people. It's actually dirt from our land. It's some of the, the ground there, and it's at the Connect Center. If you want to grab one, take it home, put it in a spot where you can be praying for it regularly, and just ask the Lord to uh, provide the way that only he can, because we have no idea how or when we'll be able to actually build. It's probably three or four years away, but only God knows how we're going to get to that point. We'd ask you and we'd invite you to put that somewhere to be reminded to regularly pray and ask him to help us to take ground to reach this city uh, for Jesus. But I want to give you a quick update that I shared there that day. It's actually gone up since then. But um, for the REACH campaign, we kind of knew coming into this year we would be stepping into a $70,000 budget gap because we would now have a land payment that we were stepping onto. We knew we had the money for the down payment, that this property was incredibly valuable, like it was more cost effective than anything else we looked at. And I know last fall we talked a whole lot about how we felt God leading us to purchase this piece of property. And so uh, one of the things that David, Brandon, and I talked and prayed through and we met with our board and talked about, we, we kind of just decided to say, like, we needed to raise $70,000 to be able to make this transaction, to make this step of faith. And uh, it, it's really cool. I got to share with the people at the Land Vision Visit that we've already had 91% of that come in. Uh, so that we, so we're, yeah, you guys can clap at that. Sorry, I didn't give you a moment to clap. Um, so we've received over $61,000 as of two weeks ago. Um, that means uh, so many of you gave one-time gifts at the end of last year that allowed us to know, like, okay, God's going to do this. The rest of you, some of you gave pledges and said, we're going to give X amount in 2021. And uh, you guys have been faithfully chipping away at those pledges to get us to this point. The cool thing is that was two weeks ago. And now today, uh, it's really exciting. I looked this morning just for fun. I don't know why. I probably shouldn't have. But uh, we're actually at 99% funded now. So we have over $69,000 that's come in for that. So thank you guys so much for, for joining with Nicole and I and contributing above and beyond to the mission of this church so that we can take this step. And everything I, I mentioned I want to remind you of about the land is that this is just a tool to reach this community, Right. Uh, we can't wait for the day when we can have a, a vacation Bible schools in our building and Mother's Day Out programs or we can have marriage reconciliation ministry and small groups with child care and things like that available in a facility. It's a tool that allows us just to reach this community for Jesus. And you guys in contributing, you're, you're doing everything you possibly can to, to partner with this local church and helping people find and follow Jesus. So thank you so much for what you've given to help make that happen. I wanted to give that announcement because not everybody got to hear it two weeks ago. So God's good. You guys are contributing. Thank you so much for helping fund the mission of this church. Um, also, before we jump into the message today, if you're new, I just want to invite you. Afterwards, I'll be at the Connect Center. We'd love to, to give you a small gift, say thanks so much for being here, um, and, and just help you figure out how you can take next steps to get connected here if God is leading you to be a part of tribe. So today, we're going to jump into our final couple of verses. We've been studying the, the Gospel of Luke this Easter season. So for the last several weeks, 10 weeks now, we've been in Luke's Gospel. And uh, today, we're going to be at the very end of it in Luke chapter 24, which we'll get to in just a minute. If you have a, your Bible, you're welcome to start flipping there. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, we'll have the words up on the screen here behind me. We also have Bibles at the Connect Center. If you don't have one, we'd love for you to take one home here in just a moment. But it was, it was May of 2006. I'll never forget um, I, I kind of base everything in my mind off of the hockey calendar. And so I remember that it, the stars were in the playoffs. And so that's why I know it was May. And uh, I texted Terry, my father-in-law, and said, hey, can, can I come over and watch the stars game with you? And uh, that wasn't like a, a super abnormal request, right? I'd known my father-in-law since I was probably about 10 years old. Uh, Nicole and I grew up at the same church. And so I had a really good relationship. In fact, in many ways, Terry was almost like an adoptive dad of mine. As long as Nicole and I were dating, I was in their home. They were feeding me constantly. Terry, I think you taught me how to tie a tie at one point for some hockey formal I had to go to. And so me texting Terry wasn't that abnormal, but this day I texted him and said, hey, can I come over and have dinner and watch the hockey game with you? And uh, like he knew right away. Apparently, as soon as I texted him, he grabbed item and was like, Gavin wants to come over for dinner. And I, I didn't know I was walking into them fully knowing everything. But I went and sat down and after like my sweaty palm moment and watching the game for like literally I waited until the end of the third period, you know, like we just chit chatted for all this time. 
And, and finally, before I left, I, I finally worked up the nerve to ask him if he would give me his blessing, his permission to marry his daughter. And he's like, wait a minute. And he got up and walked out, and I was like, what is happening? Uh, this is not how it went in my mind. He went and got Ida and brought her in as well. And he's like, I wanted her to hear this as well. And they, of course, graciously gave me permission to ask Nicole to marry me, which I think took place like a couple of months later uh, that summer, about a month later. It was one of the greatest moments of my life, seeing Nicole walk down the aisle, seeing Terry walk with her and there in front of the pastor who married us, in front of all of our family and friends in the church we grew up in. Terry said out loud, after the pastor asked him, who gives this woman to this man? He said, her mother and I, her mother and I. He, in that moment, came through with the promise he gave me. He formally gave me his blessing to marry his daughter. Um, I want us to wrestle with this idea of blessing today because we don't think much about it in our culture today. We don't talk about blessing. We, we kind of just like hashtag it here and there about how like life might be good. We might throw a bumper sticker or have a sign somewhere in our house that says blessed, right? Because we love the blessings of God, but do we really recognize what it means that God would give us his blessing? Much like this, I mean, like punk 21-year-old kid had no idea how to love and serve his future wife the way he should, I received the blessing I didn't deserve from my father-in-law. It's this overwhelming responsibility that was put on my shoulders, and yet it was something I didn't take lightly or take for granted. And in much the same way, God has blessed us richly. And it's exactly what we see in Luke chapter 24. As we wrap up our Give It Up series, today we're going to look at how we can give up blessing. We can give up our blessing back to God because he has already blessed us so much. Luke chapter 24 We're going to wrap up today as we read the last few verses, starting in verse 50. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany. If you remember all the way back to um, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday about a month ago, Bethany is just to the east of the city of Jerusalem, and it sits on this hill overlooking the city. Jerusalem itself sits on a hill, so there's a bit of a valley between the two. But he takes them back to that moment where the procession began that very hilltop where people gathered to say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus takes the 12 uh, back there to the east, and he at Bethany is about to do something really remarkable. Lifting up his hands, he blessed them. So easy to skim over that word, but I want you to imagine it much like I imagine receiving the blessing of my father-in-law and my mother-in-law that day on our wedding when they formally gave their blessing for me to marry Nicole. Jesus lifts up his hand ceremonially and he gives the 11 disciples who are with him his blessing. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. Like, can you even imagine this scene? Like, we could spend so much time trying to wrap our minds around what it looked like when Jesus, like Neo from the Matrix, like launches off of planet Earth and like flies up into the heavens. But Jesus literally ascends before them into heaven. He he gives his blessing. He formally says, like, I am with you. I have given you the right to carry my namesake. And he flies up into heaven. And they're so overwhelmed and they see him go. And they return to the temple, worshiping and blessing the name of God. There's so much beauty in this passage, but I can't even begin to wrap my mind around what it would have looked like to see Jesus fly off like that, like to ascend into the heavens. But there's this moment right before it where he gives his blessing. And I think that's really important because Jesus is going away as he warned them would happen. He's going to send the Holy Spirit to empower them to live out the life he called for them and to establish the church, but Jesus blessing them shows that he is handing off a responsibility to them. One thing I want to circle in on, though, is like, could you imagine what the the apostles themselves felt in this moment? Like, how much had they been through over these last three years? But we love, like, the final episode of a series on TV that we've been watching for years, right? Like, when the music is played just right and all the keys are left on the counter and you realize, like, was the wall, was the wall always purple in this apartment? I didn't, and you start to, like, cry because there's all these memories that flood back and it's a fictional TV show, right? Like, we get so worked up about those moments because we love coming to the end. When we sign the yearbooks at school and we exchange numbers and say, like, hey, we're going to hang out this summer, I promise, and you never got a phone call. Maybe that was just my experience in high school, right? But you have, like, this ceremonial end of a season, end of an era moment. And for the disciples, I imagine seeing Jesus ascend into heaven was, in their heart, a very similar moment. They had given their all for three years to follow this Jewish rabbi. 
They, they abandoned everything, family, careers, like they dropped everything to follow him. They were constantly confused by his action, perplexed at so many of his teachings. Everything that Jesus did seemed to be outside, outside the religious norm of the day. They struggled to comprehend and understand. I imagine they doubted regularly whether they actually should have followed him or not. Like Peter's like, did I, I really gave up my fishing business for this? I don't even know what this guy's doing. I can't keep up. I'm messing everything up. What on earth am I doing? They lived like nomads for three years. Jesus even warned them like, hey, birds have homes, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. They, they lived on the road, constantly staying with other people, setting up camp, constantly on the move because the person they were following was under persecution from Rome and from the religious elite. So many people wanted him killed that they constantly were. Could you imagine living for three years like a homeless person, like a nomad, just wandering throughout the back roads of the dusty Roman Empire? And then so many of them, they abandoned him in his arrest. They ran and scattered out of fear that they would face the same fate. And they doubted, even when they saw his resurrected body, like we talked about last week, they were perplexed, overwhelmed, looking Jesus in the face and couldn't quite put two and two together. You guys, in all of that journey, I think one thing stands remarkably clear at this blessing moment is that blessing often comes after suffering. Blessing often comes as we endure the difficult road of suffering. Just days before this, Jesus would suffer and die on the cross to forgive all of us of our sins. He would pay the ultimate price. He would live the ultimate suffering, and the blessing is on the other side of it. And I think that the apostles are finally discovering that. All of the question marks, all of the doubt, the fear, the insecurity, all that they have walked through is finally starting to make sense as they witness the blessing of God on their lives, as they see him ascend into heaven. I imagine they think, you know, I didn't figure it all out. I didn't understand everything that was going on. I ran in fear. I doubted if I should have given up my business for this, and now I wouldn't change it for the world. They endure this suffering, and now they receive the blessing from God. And can I just say, that's so true of our lives as well. So often we walk through suffering in our life. And if we would just learn to endure, even when we don't have all the details figured out, even if we can't quite put two and two together, or it seems like God isn't working the way that we would have drawn it up, if we would just faithfully follow Jesus, if we would just walk in step with him, if we would endure to the end, I think we would see a blessing that comes after the suffering in our own lives, much like the 11 did on the Mount of Bethany that afternoon. They endured so much suffering. They witnessed the suffering of Jesus himself. They scattered and ran in fear, and now on the other side, they receive the blessing of God. But what's beautiful about this text to me is not that this blessing just comes out of the blue. This isn't the first time that they have been blessed to walk with Jesus. Like, think about it. It's not just that blessing comes at the end of suffering, but that there's a blessing in and through the suffering as well. The, the, the disciples were blessed all throughout their ministry. Like, think of all the hardship they walked through, sure, but think of all they got to witness as well. They got to see Jesus feed 5,000 people on at least two different occasions. They got to witness Jesus walk across the water, have power over the storm, heal lame people and beggars, cripples, paralytics, lepers. People flocked to Jesus, and they got to be eyewitnesses of God's hand touching down into human existence and making a tangible impact. They got to walk with Jesus for three years. Sure, the journey was hard, but they were on the journey with the Son of God. So many miracles that they witnessed. So many miraculous ways in which God provided for their needs. They all gave up their jobs to follow a rabbi, right? Like they didn't know where they were laying their head each night or how they were gonna get their next meal. And yet God faithfully provided for them every step of the way. So sure, they were suffering. Sure, it might've been difficult. Yeah, they might've been wandering. And yet God faithfully provided. There was blessing even through the suffering as they had a front row seat of the very grace of God coming down to earth. My friends, I think it's the same way in our lives today. Yeah, the blessing comes at the end of the suffering. When we get that moment, when we get to step back and see God's plan all come together, we get to look back at our lives and retrospect and be like, I wouldn't have picked it that way. I didn't want it to go that way, and yet I wouldn't change it for the world because of how God moved. But can I also tell you, in the midst of the suffering, in the middle of whatever it is that you're walking through, there is a blessing from God if you will just faithfully walk with him. If you will walk in step with the Son of God, trusting him every step of the way, God had blessed the apostles greatly. It wasn't just a blessing that came on this hill 
after his resurrection, before he ascended to heaven. The blessing was always on their lives. And can I just say that blessing is on our lives as well. For all who believe in Jesus, there is a blessing on our very life as well. God has blessed us richly in everything that we do, in every experience that we have. We have been blessed by God. I want to plow through a handful of verses that just talk about how abundantly our gracious God has blessed us today. James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. God is constant, he is faithful, he is consistent, and he is consistently blessing his people. Every good gift you have comes from God. That means every breath you take, every ability you have, every opportunity that you step into, every material good that you have comes from God himself. And if you're like, but Gavin, I've worked really hard. I've worked my way into this promotion. I've, I've been able to provide for my family with the work of my hands. Deuteronomy has this great warning for us when we think that it's the strength of our own hands. Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18 says, Beware, lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as in this day. I love what Moses tells us in the book of Deuteronomy. Like you think you've earned it. And yet while you have earned it, while God has invited you into a process of using the gifts he has given you to make an impact in this world, the truth is every breath you take is a blessing from God. The truth is the fact that you walk on planet earth today is because there is a loving creator who formed you, who knew you before you were born, who knit you together in your mother's womb, as the psalmist David said. Like we have a God who has blessed us richly and invited us into the ability to create, to form, to make things in this world. So yeah, we get to work and produce, but it's not on our own power alone. God has given us every good gift we have, even our ability to work. I love how Jesus says in Matthew 7, verse 7 through 11, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? We love to give our kids great experiences. We love there to be so many presents under the tree at Christmas time. And can you imagine a God even more loving and gracious who wants to give good things to you? And yet a God who also, like you, in discernment knows, like if I give you everything, you can become arrogant and proud. You can become spoiled. I want to give you good things that actually enrich your life. I want to give you better things than just the trinkets of fleeting everyday human emotion. Like, we know how to give good gifts to our children because we have a loving God who's a father in our lives that wants to give good gifts to us. Time and time again, in James, in Deuteronomy, in Matthew, we read that we have a God who gives. We have a giving God. He has given us so much, just like he gave his blessing to the 11. And there's an authority, there's a, there's a call on their lives that comes with that blessing that we'll dig into a little bit later in the message. But he has given a blessing to the 11 there on the Mount Bethany. But my friends, he has given us everything we need to live a godly life. He has blessed us so richly. We have been given everything we have our marriage, our family, whatever your story is, whatever scars you have in the past, those can actually be gifts from God. Everything you own, every experience you have ever had, and everything you have ever accomplished are gifts from a loving, benevolent, gracious God who loves you deeply and wants you to experience his love in your life. God has blessed us. And I think if we would just take a moment before we would rush on throughout the service, before we get busy with the rest of our Sunday afternoon activity, I think it would be a beautiful thing if we would just pause and think for a moment of the blessings God has placed in our lives. In our bathroom, there's um, that awkward window that everyone has in the bathroom that's like got that crushed glass so people can't see in. You know, why do they put, I guess you want light in there, but I don't know that a window in a bathroom's a great idea. And so like on that window, we've got this sign behind the closed blinds, right? And on that, on that windowsill, there's this sign that says blessed. 
Um, and it's just, Nicole found it, at, I think you found it in Canton or some weird flea marketplace like that that you ladies love to go to. Um, and what I love about this like welded metal sign, it just is a great morning reminder. Every morning when I get in the shower, I can't not see that sign in front of me. And no matter how I'm feeling, no matter how much the kids have been fighting, no matter what frustrations I'm going through in leadership, or no matter how difficult life might be at times, I see that sign and it's this daily reminder that Guys, the, the very gift of life is an abundant blessing from a good and gracious God. We have been blessed so richly by God. And I believe we are called to respond to that blessing. So, so what are some responses? I'm gonna walk through three here today. What are our responses to this loving God who like he blessed the apostles on the Mount Bethany? What, what do we respond with today? as we receive, as we recognize, as we are aware of the blessings he has poured out so richly in our lives. And I think the first response is this. We have to learn to receive it. We have to receive a blessing. Um, if, if I can be honest, a lot of us are probably a lot better at giving than receiving in our, in our world, um, especially where we live. We're, we're used to giving to our kids. We're used to serving in the church. We're used to helping others who might go through hardship. But when it comes to receiving in our own lives, like, you walk through a hospital visit, right? Or maybe you have a surgery. Maybe you're just in a tough spot financially. And the idea of having to reach out for help probably terrifies you, right? There's a little bit of pride that can come in, especially with where we live and thinking like, I've got it all neat and orderly. I've got it all figured out. I've gotten us to this point. I've provided for my family and asking for help. If we're honest, especially men in the room, I think asking for help absolutely terrifies us. It's maybe one of our greatest fears, and yet this is the beginning point with the way of faith, that we must learn to receive the blessing of God. The, the most famous verse in all of the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16, says that for, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I want you guys to think through that for a moment. Like We believe in a God who gave to us. We read it time and time again in all these other verses that God gave something to us. And the thing that he gave was his son. Something I say a lot around here is that we want to be a give first people because we serve a give first God. Like we want to be a generous people. And you have modeled that through the reach campaign. You model that time and time again when we take up special offerings for missionaries, which we're not going to do today. If you're like, ah, what's he going to ask me for? I'm not asking for anything, right? But you guys are a generous people who love to give because we have a give first God. The question I want to ask for some of you today is, have you first received from God? Have you received the gift that he has offered to you? The, the gift of forgiveness for everything you've done wrong in life. The gift of grace that you can only receive that leads to eternal life because of what Jesus has done. That God so loved you that he gave his son to go to the cross in your place to die there to pay the penalty of your sin. We must learn to receive the gifts that God has given us. And that is the starting point on the way of faith, that we would receive God's blessings in our life. But I want to talk about a second response today. Our first response is that we learn to receive God's gift, his blessing. The second one, though, is that we would bless God that we would bless God, that we wouldn't just receive blessing, right? Like how easy is it for us to focus on like hashtag blessed life, right? Like how easy is it for us to look at that sign and be reminded, God, you're so good and then not do anything with it. But I look back at the disciples' response after Jesus blesses them at Bethany. Here's what it says in verse 52. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple doing what? Blessing God. They couldn't help but respond by just crying out, God, you're so good. You've given me so much. I'm going to worship, praise, adore, thank you for everything you have done, and I'm going to bless you. To, to bless means to, to add to something, to give in addition, to bless the name of God would be to give honor, to respect, to add glory to God's greatness, to add to his kingdom, to live on mission for him. They couldn't help but go back and bless God. Like, have you had that moment in your life where maybe like the apostles felt this day, where, where you've gotten to look back over a few years and be like, man, God, I wouldn't have written up this way. But I want to do nothing but bless your name because of what I've gotten to walk through, because of what I've gotten to receive and experience in and through this journey. Friends, I believe we are called, like the apostles, to respond in this day way once we receive the blessing of God. It starts with us receiving his blessing receiving the free gift of salvation that only Jesus can give us. 
but it's lived out each new day by us blessing the name of God. Just a few verses that share on us blessing and praising the name of God. There are so many. But Psalm 103, verse one through five says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, forget not all of his benefits who forgives all of your iniquity, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfi satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Or what about in the New Testament, Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, that you would memorize, that you would know, that you would be a studier, a creature of the word of God, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. And then what do we do? We, we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in our hearts to God. Or Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, don't get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Let another outside source change, influence the way you see everything in the world. And as you're filled with the Spirit, you'll address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart giving thanks always and for everything, giving thanks to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, once we've received the gift, the blessing of God, our only response, the most natural inclination of our heart should be to praise and worship him with everything we've got, which is why we wanted to open with digging into some scripture today. We wanted to set up our hearts to posture ourselves in such a way that we would recognize the God who has blessed us so richly and we as a people would respond by blessing the name of God in song together today. I wanna invite everybody to stand up as we're about to sing in just a moment. But before we do, I, I, wanna, I wanna set a couple of ground rules. If, if you're like, a, I like to sit and reflect and worship in that way, then sit. If you're a stand and sing and raise your hands and bless the name of God for all the benefits that he's given you in his life, then respond in that way. However you feel led to worship in this moment, lift high the name of God. But remember that you cannot bless God until you've received blessing from him. And so I just wanna invite you, if you're in this place and you've not received the blessing of Jesus as your Lord and Savior, who's forgiven you of your sin, who's given you new and eternal life, because of his death and resurrection. I, I'm gonna be staying in the back during this next two songs. I invite you, come and talk to me. Give your life to Jesus today and receive from step one, the blessing of God in your life and then praise him as a result. Let me pray as we sing together. Jesus, thank you for your grace, for your love, for your abundant mercy. Would you be blessed and honored because of the blessings you have poured out on us, Lord, we can't help but bless your name today. I know we're doing things out of order, but I want to wrap up the message here with you guys. So talked about receiving the blessing is our first response because of the God who's blessed us so much. We can simply receive the blessing that he has so richly poured out in Jesus. The second thing is that we bless God, which you guys partnered with us in doing just now, that we would live a lifestyle of continuously blessing God and adding to his name, his renown, making him famous making much of what he has done in our life and not take for granted the everyday miraculous blessings he so freely pours out. The third and final thing that we respond with today is blessing others, blessing others. I wanna look just really briefly at Genesis chapter 12, um, verse one and two. Uh, this is, if you know the story of God's people, this is the moment where God calls Abraham and he says, I'm gonna make you into a great nation, but I want you to key in on the verbiage that God gives Abraham because he's been up to one thing through Jesus and all the way back through Israel. God has been a God who pours out blessing. Let's look at Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So God says right there in the beginning, I'm going to bless you. So that, there's a so that with it. I'm gonna bless you so that you will bless others. I'm gonna bless you, your household, your family. You're gonna multiply. You're actually gonna become this great nation that I'm going to show my covenant blessing through the ends of the earth. And people will see you and they'll see my hand on your life. So that why? So that you can be a blessing to others. God expects us not just to receive his blessing, not just point it back to him like a mirror, but to funnel his very blessing on our lives so the people all around us. His blessing should flow through us much like that covenant relationship he had with Israel and this promise, this promise we just sang about, all of his promises, right? God is faithful to fulfill his promises. 
And through Abraham, his promise was that he was going to bless them and call them to bless others. The problem is Israel did what you and I so often love to do. We, we make it about our blessing. We make it about us looking great, us acting a certain way, and keeping, hoarding the blessing to ourselves rather than pouring it on to the neighbors all around us. God expects us to receive his blessing so that we can pour out his blessing in our everyday lives, which is one of the most important things that we can do. We have to learn to be a blessing for others. We have been blessed to bless. And this is what Jesus was ultimately up to. As he came into the earth, he came to give that blessing not just to Israel, but to all who would receive the blessing of God through Jesus. And as we receive that blessing, we are called into the same covenant idea that we would receive a blessing in order to give blessing to those around us. Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says this, and he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These were foundational in Jesus' life. The most important thing that you can get right is loving God. That's what we just talked about. That's what we just sang about, that we would bless God, that we would make much of him. We would show him love in all of our actions and all that we do, that we would bless the name of God. But Jesus said there is something equally as important. There's something as important as how you bless God. And he said, loving your neighbor as yourself. The expectation of the blessing we receive is that we would pour it back to God, but we would multiply it to those around us by loving and blessing our neighbors as ourselves. And if you're wondering, like, how is it that we do this? How do we live a life blessing others? How do we bless someone into the kingdom? I recently ran across like one of the most practical books I've ever read called uh, Bless. It's just B-L-E-S-S by John and Dave Ferguson. We're probably going to do a whole sermon series walking through the concepts of this book uh, later on in the summer, but I want to give you just like a little teaser of a simple acrostic that you can live your life doing. If you're one of those practical people, like note takers, type A, like you have the rest of your day already planned out, you're going to love this. The rest of you, it'll be helpful, right? And so here's how we can live a life blessing others, literally just living this acronym, B-L-E-S-S. -S. It's good. I have five fingers. I would not be good if I only had four. I started counting and realized there's, there's five. This is going to work out perfectly. I didn't plan that. I didn't know there was five letters in bless. I should have planned that. Sorry. So bless, uh, B, begin with prayer, L, listen, E, eat, S, serve, and the last S is story. So I want to walk through each one of those. B, begin with prayer. It, it's literally this simple. You guys heard me say this uh, back in the fall as we were going through the REACH campaign, that we would be a people where each one in this church would reach one for Jesus each year. Each one, reach one each year. Can we be a people who actively pursue loving, blessing our neighbors into the kingdom of God? And I believe that begins with prayer. These audacious idea that you would begin actively praying for people in your spheres of influence. Maybe it's on your street or on your block, in your neighborhood. Maybe it's in the cubicles that you work in or on the Zoom calls that you're on. Maybe it's in the, the soccer team thread, right? It's the people that you're around would you ask God through prayer to lay on your heart someone you can actively be praying to bless in your life? Beginning with prayer isn't just this like trite Christian-y thing to do. It's us recognizing that God is the one who saves. He just uses vessels like us to take the message of salvation. You and I, we can't save anyone. Only Jesus has the power to save. But if we would partner with God, ask him to lead us, I promise you he will, he will make things really uncomfortable for you at times. He'll put the name of someone on your heart. He'll encourage you. He'll challenge you to walk up to some stranger and be like, I just felt like I was supposed to share something with you. And as you learn to begin with prayer, God will move through you in a way that he will bless others through you because you sought to be a blessing. Beginning with prayer is an incredibly important step because it helps you recognize God's power in your life. A second L is listen. Uh, listen is not just listen in prayer, but it's listen to people's stories. Um, what we aren't called to do is to find evangelistic targets that we can go shoot our apologetics, shoot our doctrine, shoot the Romans road at. My friends, we probably need to share what we know at some point, but it's never going to be this first step in a relationship. Most people today, I mean, you've heard the old adage, most people today don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And if we can just learn to be a people who actively listen, and if we need clues on what this looks like, let's reread through Luke. How many questions did Jesus actually answer? He didn't. He often listened well and asked a question to connect further, to hear more of the story, and to find out the true need so that he could be a blessing. Jesus listened even more than he taught. 
He was an active listener throughout his ministry, and he calls us to be a people who will listen well. There's a reason why you don't win people to Jesus on social media, because social media is just about us getting our opinion heard, and frankly, nobody cares. We just want more followers, so we feel valuable, but Jesus is calling us to be a people who listen to others well and care deeply and would enter into a relationship, not just for the sake of someone's salvation, but that we would be a blessing in their life, hearing their story and knowing how only Jesus can meet their needs. We must learn to be listeners. The E is the best part. It's my favorite, hands down. We've had some fun stories throughout the years, just sharing meals with people who don't know Jesus. As you pray, as God lays people on your heart, as you learn to listen and enter a relationship with that person, take them out for coffee, sit down and have a meal, invite them into your home and get to know them more deeply. As you eat, it's like something supernatural happens in food and God knows it because there's food everywhere in this book. If we can just be so intentional as to love our neighbors well enough to have them into our home and share a meal, I promise you God will move and cause you to be a blessing in their life. You'll become a person they trust because you listen to them. You'll become a person they go to and share life with because you've shared a meal with them. And this will open up opportunities for you to do what God has called you to do in their lives. That's to serve. The first S is that you would be a servant, that you would know their needs, you've heard their story, you've shared meals with them, you're in a relationship with them, so you're at a point where it's like, I know my neighbor has this need. I know this widow across the street has this need, so I can step into that need because we're connected relationally in her life. It's not just that she's an evangelism target, right? How often have you tried street evangelism and it's gone well? Not often, right? It's funny, Ferguson and Ferguson in the book talk about why does the good news feel so bad all the time? Like every time I share the good news, it just feels really uncomfortable. Often because we're more interested in checking the box on our list and doing the Christian thing of sharing our faith rather than doing what Jesus did, which is entering relationship with people who needed to be blessed and cared for. So if we would learn to step in by beginning with prayer, by listening, by eating, man, the service opportunities are gonna be everywhere. We'll know immediately how we can be a blessing, where they need our help, where we can serve and love them and show them what Jesus has done through us. We can be a conduit for the blessing of God through our lives to them. And then finally, it gets to the most important part, which is your story. You just simply share your story. Whether or not you've got like all of the steps figured out, um, sorry, this is my son's iPad now, and he's getting a text message from a buddy. <laughs> I didn't, if you heard that, distracted me. Um, uh, kids and technology, oh, why did I give that to him? Okay, um, so whether, whether or not you have gotten to this point where you, you know all of the, the Romans road, right? All the verses you need to share in salvation, like you've got it all figured out, you can absolutely share your story of how God has been a blessing in your life. And that's honestly what it looks like to be prepared in season and out to explain the hope that you have. It's simply sharing the story of like, look, this is what my life looked like before Christ and then I met Jesus and this is what my life has been like after then. I've experienced the blessing of God moving in and through my life. And as you share that story from a place of trust and in a relationship, it's amazing what God will do to bring people unto salvation. Again, because you cared enough to enter a relationship not just shoot the gospel at somebody like a target. My friends, we are called to be a people who take the blessing God has given us and bless others with it. We should be a people actively looking for someone to bless. And I think we can live that simple acronym, which again, we're gonna talk more about this summer because it's such a practical tool to help us remember each day as an opportunity to bless someone around us, to bless, to love our neighbor as ourselves, as Jesus himself commanded us to do. It's so cool that, to me that next Sunday is Baptism Sunday. We're going to see people go public with their faith in Jesus. And my prayer for you as a church body is that you would see this as an opportunity to remember that that happens because of you, because of you blessing others, because of you sharing the story of what Jesus has done in your life. You get the opportunity to bring people to the point where they declare publicly faith in Jesus. My question is, who will be in that baptism tank? Whether it's next week or next time we do it in a few months, who will be in that tank because you blessed them into the kingdom, because you loved, you listened, you served, you ate meals, that you blessed them into the kingdom of God? Can I just tell you the mission of Jesus comes to life as you get to see people enter the kingdom because you blessed them? It never gets old seeing someone come to faith because you got to have a small part in blessing them into the kingdom. Every single day is an opportunity to bless someone. And can I just say, like, when we recognize that we have been blessed to be a blessing, it changes everything. Like, seeing Terry and Ida 
after they were walking Nicole down the aisle, hearing Terry say her mother and I, like when he formally gave me that blessing, there was this moment where I was like, oh crap, what do I do, right? Like I was amazed and overwhelmed that they gave me their daughter in marriage, but something in my mind clicked. I was like, I am responsible for caring for and loving this woman. The, the night I asked Terry for his blessing, his words to me were care for her. Take care of, yeah, absolutely you have my blessing, but here's what comes with that. Take care of her, love her well, serve her, bless her. I am called to bless my wife because that man asked me to be a blessing in her life. And can I say, God wants the same. Your, your loving, gracious, heavenly father wants you to do the same with his bride. He wants you to bless it. And he wants you to find others in this community who need to be blessed because of what you have received from Jesus. We have an opportunity. We have a commandment. We have a wonderful expectation from our God who would raise his hands over us and bless us so that we would bless others. My friends, that's what it's all about. It's not just about us receiving blessing. It's about us receiving blessing and pouring it on to those around us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the overwhelming blessings we have because of your death, your resurrection. God, you have abundantly given us so much. And we pray that you are honored and praised by the words that we sang today, that you are lifted up in our lives, that we, that we recognize all the blessings you have given us and we try to bless you in return. Lord, thank you for the abundance with which we have received. God, I pray that you would allow us to bless those around us each new day. Would we be a blessing? And Lord Jesus, for anyone in this room who needs to receive you as Lord and Savior, God, if they didn't take that step earlier in the moments where we sang to you, I pray that they would recognize right now in their heart, all they have to do is put their trust in you. Pray to receive you by saying something like this, Jesus, I know I've sinned, but I know you came to die for my sin and rise again. I turn from my way and I choose to give my life to you. Be my Lord, my Savior. Bless me so I can bless others. Jesus, thank you for your blessing. God, I ask that we would be a people who walk in your blessing each day. It's in your name we pray.